All right, we're going to continue reading. Um, so we've landed on an island. Is that what happened? I think uh, we just saw a giant ocean battle between... Uh, yeah, some weird fish people and um, and some sort of space pirates, right? But their spaceship was underwater, which is kind of cool also. And uh, we've washed up on our shore. And these people, these island people, they say, you're not a Durkon. One of them calls out, it's not a Durkon. Another says, a Durkon would have killed a child as soon as it got its hands on it, right? Like a child ran out to us. I'm trying to get to Cabron, you tell them. Um, skipping ahead, perhaps the king of Solaria on the island of Potkos would know where to find the Cabron, one of them says, or the sorceress Zorna on Zondis suggests another. So to continue on, if we go to Zondis, that's on page 10. If we go to Potkos, that's to turn to page 30. And I'm going to tell you if you go to Potkos that's a dead angle that's a dead end because um, you'll just end up getting captured again and we've already I think I've been down this pathway twice now so I don't want to go through it a third time but yeah you get captured and by the Barakas and you go back to the Baraka city on page 13 and uh, you know the combination lock for that thing already. So we're just not going to go down this pathway again, right? I'm going to go to page 10 instead. So we're going to go to page 10. And we're going to see what's up with this sorceress. Um, here it is. In time, you find yourself swimming through a forest of coral. Wait, what? I feel like I've already been to um, the coral before. Yeah. Well, I'm going to have the uh, reader, the... Hmm. Oh, we, this is where we saw the spaceship earlier. So, to read it again, uh, I'll just have the uh, the voice generator read it real quick. And I will go from there. In time you find yourself swimming through a forest of coral. You move through the tall, multicolored pillars. Followed by thousands of small fish that regard you with curiosity. After a while, you see open water ahead. Dot. But at the sight of an enormous shape heading your way, you stop the ND pier around one of the pillars at the very edge of the forest. A giant spaceship is cruising under the water. Dot. You've seen similar types of amphibious craft on your diplomatic missions to foreign galaxies. Dot. A spaceship could get you out of Salaria and even off Tenopia itself. But then you hear a voice warning you. Lieutenant S.A. Pelophon sending out a long it's range a of message leads telling you to beware of Durkons. Okay, so these are the Durkons and they're space pirates. So if you swim to page 84, we'll be stuck uh, cleaning barnacles or something like that again. But if you uh, swim along the border of the coral just out of sight, turn to page 73. So this is going to be a new pathway if we go to page 73. And here we are. As you swim along, you see a long eel-like creature up ahead, twisting and turning through the water in your direction. You dodge to the right, trying to get out of the creature's way, but the eel also seem, also turns in that direction. Uh, as it zooms past you with a burst of speed, its tail brushes against you, hitting you with a tremendous jolt of electricity. Dang, he shocks me. You see stars and bursts of colors, of colored lights before you uh, feel yourself passing out. Uh, when you come to, you find yourself floating in a gentle warm current. Uh oh. Gentle warm currents have a tendency to pull us back. My dog Rio is crying. Uh, turn to page 43. 
Wait, 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 to check the map. You find yourself floating in a gentle warm current. If you swim with the current, turn to page 28. If you swim against the current, turn to page 108. All right. I'm going to use this book, the second book, as a cheat. And I'm going to check some of these pages and see if I've seen them before. So page 28. It is new. We have not been to this page before. Okay. You swim as fast as you can. Then a voice comes into your mind. You're not sure, but you feel the speaker is somewhere in front of you. Hurry, the voice says. The Barakas are after you. Uh, you look behind and see a row of Barakas heading in your direction. Up ahead is a large white shape. Up ahead, a large white shape rests on the sea bottom. As you get closer, you see it's a giant clam, and it's open. A voice in your mind says, get inside the clam. The brockas are gaining on you fast. You have to make a quick decision. Uh, well, we're not going back to page 13 and being captured again, so let's turn to page 32 and see what's inside this giant clam. You jump inside the clam, and it snaps shut, just as the Barakas are about to get you. You can hear the dull thuds as they gang angrily, as they bang angrily, sorry, on the outside of the clam. Um, I have not been to the giant clam before. This is the first time I've been to the giant clam, so I'm just going to keep reading. It's completely dark inside the clam. Cautiously, you feel your way around. There seem to be plenty of room. Or there seems to be plenty of room. The the inside walls are smooth and glass-like. Maybe if I zoomed in a little bit, I'd have an easier time reading. There we go. Are smooth and glass-like, except for one side that is soft and mushy. Oh man, we can go way in. As you touch the soft part, you hear a sound like laughter in your mind. Uh, then something says, "Oh, please don't do that. I'm so ticklish." You pull your hand back. Sorry about that, you think. Apology accepted, says the voice in your head. If you wait here a while, the Barakas will go away. They are easily bored. Now me, I'm never bored. Really, you think? But what can you do that's interesting? You have to stay in the same place all the time. True, says the clam. But my mind travels all over Solaria, sometimes even out of it. Uh, then you must know some way of actually getting out of Solaria and getting to Cabron, you say. Go to the next page. Oh, man, bad mouse. I do, says the clam. If you can get through the giant snakes, you'll be almost there. Okay, so just past the giant snakes. Um, we should remember that. That's all. I'll tell you now. Uh, that's all I'll tell you now. If you come back and visit me again sometime, I may tell you more. Oh, great. Now I have to come back and tell you, ask you again. Um, by turning to page 45, maybe we can just skip it. But no, all right. Now I suggest that you be on your way as the Barakas are gone. Good luck in your search. The clam opens, and you swim out into the bright water. Checking your map, you see that the city of the Barakas lies west. That's one direction you want to avoid. Check your map on page 25. I'm going to turn to page 25 on this and check it. Here we are, 25. Do we already have that on our master map? Yes, we do. So we're at the giant clam. We want to avoid the city of the Barakas. Our choices are two. Uh, you can head east and turn to page 42, which will probably take us to the shallow water again. Uh, I think we were in the shallow water earlier. Um, if we head north, we turn to page 96. North of the sea clam is a compass and the edge of the water and another compass and maybe the sea mounts and a warm current blowing back. 
uh, I don't really see which way to go north. And if you turn south, you turn to page 27. And that'll take you to the eye of the storm. And uh, hopefully to Zondas. Uh, we got stuck in the coral forest last time. We still need to see this. I thought I was going to go see the uh, the sorceress at Zondas earlier with the last read, but apparently not. I think I'm going to head oh, decisions, right? I mean, we keep getting stuck in that coral uh, forest, so maybe we can... Um, maybe we should just head east. If we head east, maybe we can end up at Lamara Island or Pot Coast Island, or Nine Tree Island. Uh, any of those islands um, are really great options. So let's head east and turn to page 42. On page 42, we are, here we are. Uh, I'm going to use the voice generator here. Hey flat, you swim along, the whaler keeps getting brighter and brighter, lane places. Alright, uh, that just annoyed me. <laughs> um, but it's as you swim along, the water keeps getting bright. Oh wow, there's just so many um, misread characters in this. So I'm just going to read it. Uh, as you swim along, the water keeps getting brighter and brighter. In places, orange shafts of sunlight sh uh, shoot down through the clear water. Soon you, uh, your head breaks the surface of the water. The sea sh itself is relatively calm. You ride up and down on the long swells. All around you are banks of dark clouds, but directly overhead, the huge orange sun of Tenopia hangs in a clear sky. You are in the eye of the great storm that rages over Celeria. Far off on the horizon is what looks like an island, although at the at this distance you can't be sure. You swim toward it. As you get closer you see a small village on the shore. The islanders are running back and forth on the beach and they are all carrying spears and pointing them in your direction. Um. I mean, this is the, the island we were just on. You can take a chance to go to the island again and get bad directions and be left on a couple of loops. Or you can, what well, you know, you, you go on a loop, but you go to the clam twice and you'll get more information from them. But I'm going to try and just keep going east. Like, I feel like we just need to keep going east. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming. And go to page 47 real quick and see if we get trapped again. You swim around the island and keep going. After what seems like a long time, you see a huge shape heading towards you. It's a ship. Shit. Um, Alright, so I'm going to cheat and see if either, if either of these paths take us backwards real quick. Just by checking page 84 real quick. Yeah, these are the Durkons again. We want to avoid them. So, let's just swim away from it and turn to page 128 and hopefully we can advance the story some and then, you know if you saw the spaceship that enslaved you once already you would probably swim away from it 128 is really far into the book it's at the end actually oh, oh shit that's a scary picture. That looks like a Loch Ness monster eating me alive. So, um, okay. As you are swimming along, something grabs you from behind. For a few terrible seconds, you think it's a Baraka. But then, whatever it is, lifts you high out of the water. You struggle to look back. And what you see is a long neck extending back into the water. It's a sea monster. And you're in its mouth. Suddenly, it lets you drop. You do a 30-foot dive back into the water and plunge into, the fo into a forest of seaweed. Then the head of the monster is back down beside you. 
Its terrible jaws open and gobble you up in one bite. Quickly, you uproot a bunch of seaweed and stuff it into the monster's mouth. While the beast is preoccupied, you swim off as fast as you can. And you don't stop until you are a safe distance away. Oh, that's scary. Um, if you continue swimming underwater, turn to page 73. If you head up to the surface of the water, turn to page 118. Okay. Let's, uh, let's do a check on 118 real quick and see if it's a safe path passageway. Yeah. Bum, bum, bum. So, yeah, we can read here. As you swim, light streams through the water from above, and soon your head pops up above the surface. Instead of the storm that rages over most of the sea kingdom, the sky is clear. Is a clear orange. Tall banks of reddish and pink clouds tower on the horizon in every direction. The surface of the sea is smooth, almost like a mirror with only very gentle swells lifting you up and down. Up ahead is a small island with a grove of nine trees around, arranged in a circle. You swim toward the grove. You sink down at the base of one of the trees and consult your computer map. You are within the eye of the great storm that rages over the sea, Salarian Sea. It feels so good to breathe without gills that you're tempted to head south and stay within the eye. But who knows what dangerous, dangerous creatures may lurk underwater th here. Perhaps you should strike out for the north. All right. So let's look at the map again on page 43. But basically, it should be this map. We're on the Nine Tree Island. And we have the option of going south toward toward the Potkos Island, which usually gets you stuck by the Barakas, but maybe not. You can swim north, which goes to page 115. Let's check page 96 with this other book that I've got open. Page... Very close. 96. Oh, this is a new page. Let's just continue reading here. As you swim along, you s are suddenly surrounded by hominids in black diving suits and helmets. They attack so quickly that you don't have a chance to fight back. They tie you up and tow you away at the end of a long rope. Oh, man. That looks rough. After many hours, you reach a large area, fenced in on all sides. You are untied, given a shovel, and pushed inside. Bright floodlight illuminate, uh, uh, I'm sorry, bright floodlights illuminate the sea bottom here. Dozens of sea creatures, even some barracas, are digging in the seabed. Once, uh, one of the other captive creatures is a pelican who informs you that you've been captured by the greedy race of cracks. As you listen to the pelican's voice in your mind, an acoustic or an aquatic mammal of a species that you haven't seen before swims over to you and hovers close by. With its snout, it points to a corner of the enclosure. Turn to page 107. Well, this is kind of interesting. This is a third race that likes to enslave people in this sea kingdom. There you see one of the cracks prying open a golden mollusk. A large gold-colored pearl falls out, dropping slowly to the sand. The crack scoops it up, puts it in a uh, sack, and begins to swim in your direction. You get the message. You'd better start digging, but you are already planning your escape. Whenever you have a chance, you, dem uh, yeah, you demonstrate you your plan to the others. When you start tossing up sand into the water, everyone will do the same. When the water is cloudy and the guards can't see clearly, you will all make your break. Your plan works perfectly. 
you the outer gate is broken open and you all swim to freedom you now get a new map on page 125 so let's go ahead and update our main map page 125 is yes here we are in the northeastern part of this kingdom that we can now add to our master map control G bum 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 And there we go. We've got our master map in place. Let's go ahead and look at this map. In here, we weren't in the Duracon forest. We were at the cracks, but the cracks don't seem to be on. Oh, yeah, here we are. The cracks. If we head south, we'll reach the Duracon fortress, which would be bad. Uh, that's where we were cleaning barnacles, I think. Um, but we're at the edge of the great storm, so we don't really have any other directions to go. We could go to the Toon Cape. Um, yeah, let's see what our choices are. Okay. Check the map on page 125. If you go west, you turn to page 115. If you go north, turn to the next, go on to the next page. Well, I mean, I can check the next page and see. Yeah, we can check this. It looks safe. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and go north. You are swimming along with long, uh, with strong strokes when you see a large oval shaped fish with black and white horizontal stripes up ahead. As you swim close to it, it suddenly changes into a large jellyfish. Then it turns into a fierce looking fish that is all mouth and it starts coming at you. As it is just about to clamp its jaws down on you, it changes into a free floating sponge and slowly sinks towards the bottom of the sea. You decide to get out of there, just in case it decides to change into something that will come after you again. Sounds like a mimic that was just trying to scare you. That's interesting. Uh, I'm not sure that we should swim away from something like that. That sounds like it could be really cool. But here we are with our um, directions again. We can go back to 128 or 115. It really wants us to go to page 115. Um, so I'm just going to check 128 one more time and going, okay, so 128 was to go south. Yeah. Yeah, so 128 was to go south. Yeah, and that's where we get attacked by this monster again. Um, which might be the right way, honestly. Um... Let's look at 115, though. Because we've already been there. Already done that. Let's do something new. Up ahead, you see a steep rise in the, in the sea bottom. A cave-like opening is in the center. Uh, oh. As you go, get closer, you see that the opening is an elaborately carved doorway. You peer inside. A faint glow makes it possible to see down a long corridor stretching straight ahead you follow it turn to page 117 the corridor seems to go on forever you are just about to turn back when a, you stumble into a large cavern you swim across the wide cavern floor to the uh, to the opposite wall in it are four doorways leading into four different tunnels over each doorway is a sign with an inscription on it. The only letters that are rec uh, that you recognize in the inscriptions are A and R. So we have some sort of weird language with uh, lots of R's and lots of A's. Oh no! And 
we were stuck on something. All right. If you go into the tunnel marked with something that looks like a Baracas, I mean, it looks exactly like Baracas. That would be bad. Um, you turn to page 30. If you go to the one... Uh, that looks like it spells cracks, you go to page 96, which would also be bad. If you go to the one that's spelled... What is that? All right, using Barack... Oh, so there's a new character in this one we just don't understand. There's two new characters in this one that we don't know. But there's an R in the middle. Um, hmm... To consult my notes, we're trying to get to Cabron, I thought. Um, so if it was Cabron, none of these goes to Cabron. But this is something A, something A-R-A. -A. What could that be? What could those letters be? Um, yeah, so I page 42 sounds familiar. Sounds like we've been to page 42, right? Page 66, we have not been to. Um, so let's check uh, page 66 and see if it's something new. Just real quick. Yeah, page 66. Here we are. So, page 66 is a way to be captured by the Gorns. I think I've already been captured by the Gorns. Um, page 103. Pretty sure I've already been captured by the Gorns. And I might have been captured by them twice. I haven't read, I haven't been captured by the Gorns twice. I'm just going to continue here. Um. So, to go to page 66 and read from the beginning, sorry. Page 66, pair, uh, suddenly a pair of lights is right in front of you. They blind you for a moment as several pairs of hands roughly grab hold of you. Your legs are tied together and your arms are tied behind your back. You struggle to get loose, but you can't. Seconds later, you are dragged into an airlock in the side of the of a scout craft so last time we were with the gorons we escaped in a scout craft a whole fleet of them chased us and then uh, we ran into the spaceship and then there was like a giant battle between the gorons and the space pirates so here we're getting captured again and we're turning to page 103 so 103 is right here um, yeah, so one of the Gorns is looking down at you. Didn't we catch one of these creatures before, he says. Think this could be the same one? I doubt it, says the second one. They probably all look alike. Treacherous creatures, though. We'd better kill this one, or throw it back. Let's dump it, but leave it tied up, says the first Gorn. It'll make a tasty morsel for any Barakas that are around. Seconds later, you find yourself back in the water outside the scout craft. Your arms and legs are still tied. Slowly, you sink to the bottom, to the sea bottom, landing near some sharp coral. You work your way across the sand to the coral, and it doesn't take uh, you long to cut your bonds. However, or carefully, you swim away from the Gorn scout craft. You keep close to the sea bottom until you reach a series of shoals. Now, check your map on page 63. 
Yeah, check your map on page 63. And look for the shoals. So here we are at the shoals. It's the first time we've been there, maybe. Now, if you go north, looking at this map, let's look at the my master map. Well, oh, wow, we're we're way back here. Oh uh, yeah, we're just kind of bouncing around in this map. All right. So, um, I'm glad they actually wrote shoals in there. Oh dear, I might have lost my place. Oh, no, here we are. We're on this right page. Okay, carefully swim away from the goal, the Gorn scout craft. Now we can go to page 96, which means to go north. Uh, north of the shoals. North of the shoals is warm current in the city of the Baracas and the giant sea clam again, which we could go to the sea clam a second time. It's probably the fastest way out, honestly. He's got some clue that we need to know. Or we can go east and turn to page 89. Uh, let's check page 89 for danger, for dangerous resets. This book does have me going in some circles. Ooh, I have not been to page 89. We're finally at the Sorceress. Yeah, I would like to go here. I've been trying to get here several times and just got mixed up somehow. You swim through clear water for what seems like a long time. Finally, you come to a vast underwater forest of multicolored pillars of coral. You swim through the forest into open water. A short way beyond the coral, the water starts to get shallow. Soon, you can stand up on, uh, out of the water. You take a deep breath, enjoying the, uh, the feel of an air into your lungs. The feel of air in your lungs. You see an island not far away. In its center is a small marble temple. A female figure stands on the beach in front of the temple. I am Zorna, sorceress of Zondas. In all of Solaria, she says as you wade ashore, have you come to ask me a question? Well, heck yeah, man. How did I get out of here? Turn to page 94. As a matter of fact, I have, you said. I'm trying to get to Gabron, where I'm, I'm told there is a galactic patrol station. If I am to help you get to Gabron, Zorna says, you must give me that device you carry with you. No, you say, wondering how she knows about your computer. I can't give you my computer. Very well, then, she says, and immediately starts to fade. Wait a minute, you call out. At least let me think about it. Zorna becomes solid again. Are you sure you can help me get to Cabron, you ask? I can help you greatly, she says. All right. The, I mean, in the last book, we had a similar situation, and we got our computer back immediately. So I'm going to give her my computer. If you give Zorna your computer, turn to page 90. So that's what we're going to do. Ah, you reach into your pocket and give Zorna your computer, but it's already gone. Then a small square piece of thin metal appears in your hand. The metal square is covered with strange writing. Zorna starts to fade again. Wait, you call out. I can't read this writing. I don't know what it says. But Zorna has already faded away. Your computer is gone as you are left with something you can't even read. You look closely at the writing. You look closely at that writing. What do, what do we see here? We see some letters that we know from like earlier, right? For the Barakas and such. Um, but this is probably just an alphabet, you know? Some sort of, tr something we can translation. It, this is something we probably have to translate to know how to get to the end. Uh, I'm going to take a break here. All right.